I've spent over a year in Zimbabwe in the last couple of years. And I, <laughs> it's the sixth time now that uh, they issued a new currency since uh, independence in 1980. And the sad thing is that there is a lot of corruption going on in Zimbabwe and also the political elites are sadly stealing from their people. They have been doing this over many years now and um, sadly this hasn't changed to the better. So the problem is that in Zimbabwe, it's really like a lab where you can see how you can take the fiat system to the extreme. Um, it shows how the traditionally the traditional monetary system is controlled and can be rigged by, by those in control. And uh, it goes to show there is something called the Cantillon effect. It's named by the 18th century economist Richard Cantillon, who observed that those who are close to the issuance of new money profit the most. So the money reaches the central banks and the uh, other banks that are in the central bank network first and the people who work there, they get the new money first and they can spend it already. And in the meantime, the money gets to all the people in the country, but by then there's already a higher supply of banknotes in, uh, in the exchange in the country, meaning the value of each banknote goes down. So the later you receive the money, the less value it has. So that's one of the things that you really can see uh, in Zimbabwe. And um, it's a kleptocracy, as I said, sadly, the ruling elites are stealing 1.5 billion US dollars in gold every year. So Zimbabwe is a very rich country. It has a lot of natural resources. It was the bread basket, basket of the Southern African region. But now, sadly, its national currency is not worth anything. No one wants to use it. And that's a big problem, of course, for the country and for the businesses inside of the country. So um, you were asking about the new currency. So when I came to Zimbabwe the first time in early 2020, the, Zimb the new Zimbabwean dollar was only one year old. In beginning of 2019, the central bank introduced the new Zimbabwean dollar and they promised their people the exchange rate will stay one to one to the US dollar. And most people want the US dollar in Zimbabwe and um, I think about 80% of the money in circulation is US dollar and only 20% is the national currency. So when I came the first time, the exchange rate wasn't one to one anymore. After one year, it was already one to 28. And then the last time, last year I was in Zimbabwe, the exchange rate shot to one to 3,500. And then in January this year, when I left the country, it was one to 12,000. So 12,000 Zimbabwe dollar were one US dollar. That shows you how much the currency has lost in value. And then in April, the inflation really exploded because the exchange rate went to one to 35,000 in April in only three months. So what did the government do and the central bank? They simply invented a new currency. The SIG, it's now called Zimbabwe gold because they say, the central bank says, it's backed by 2.5 million tons, no, 2.5 tons of gold. Um, so the question is, is it really backed by gold? Because even the government does not accept the new currency for its services. For instance, if you want to get a passport, you have to pay it in US dollars. So it seems that the central bank and the government itself doesn't want to accept their own currency. 
And the exchange rate already has changed or has risen. At the beginning, it was 1 to 13, and now it's 1 to 20 again. So it seems to be the same game all over again. And this is very, really a very, very sad story. And it's very extreme. But in principle, it shows that the system can be rigged by the powerful. They can print money and they can extort basically their own people um, through the fiat system. And this is not possible with Bitcoin because you can't inflate Bitcoin. You can't create Bitcoin out of nothing. Um, and um, that's why it would be such a great tool for Zimbabweans. So another question was, is Bitcoin being used in Zimbabwe? Yes, it is being used. Um, it's uh, possible to exchange, to send Bitcoin to Zimbabweans. It's possible for them to exchange it to US dollars peer to peer. And I never had a problem uh, to find someone who wants my Bitcoin, to be honest. And uh, Bitcoin is being used. And it's interesting that it's um, a similar Pareto um, distribution of which uh, cryptocurrency or which money is being used. Like 80%, I said before, people are using US dollars and 20% are using the national currency. 80% want USDT, the stable coin, and 20% want Bitcoin. They hold it as a hedge basically against the inflation or to save for the long term. Um, but many people know the US dollar. They value the US dollar, although, of course, the US, US dollar itself has inflation and loses value over time, but not as much as the Zimbabwean currency. But in the end, if you really want to save money long term, I believe that Bitcoin is the best option. And then another thing I encountered is that not many people are using the Lightning Network. It's working. I did my Bitcoin Lightning Wallet test in January this year. Um, so people can even use self-custody Lightning Wallets. It's possible. But um, the adoption of Lightning is in many African countries, as well as in Europe, um, I realized these days, very bad. So people, um, even now, people don't even know that the Lightning Network exists, which makes Bitcoin payments much faster more private and much cheaper. So yeah, that's the story about uh, Bitcoin and um, the new Zimbabwe gold currency in Zimbabwe. We will see how the whole story develops, um, but it's uh, sadly, um, I don't think that it will change very soon. I believe um, that it will stay the same for the next years, for the foreseeable future. Hello, my name is Anita Posch and if you liked that video, please subscribe to my channel now to inspire me to create more content like this. And if you want to learn more about Bitcoin, then sign up for my free weekly Bitcoin newsletter at anita.link news.